switching mic on. Next up is Amir, and uh, you can, once you get your things uh, set up and cooking there, uh, Amir's going to show you some of the things that he's created uh, with the Connect integration. And I think one of the probably <laughs> best parts of Amir's demo is that he actually navigates the whole presentation using the Connect. So it's all yours. Thanks, Dave. Um, I'm going to wait for the screen to change here. Let me introduce myself. My name is Amir Hirsch. I, uh, I started a company called ZigFu. We just did Y Combinator this past summer. How many people here were actually at the demo day? Any of you? Oh, we got some people. So you've probably seen uh, the basic presentation that we offer. I'm going to go ahead and launch that right now. This is the uh, first time we're actually showing this portal publicly. Uh, on demo day, we presented this uh, only slide viewer. ZigFu is creating an ecosystem of motion controlled apps. We provide developer tools and uh, UI components that make it rapid uh, application development process possible for developers. The company is me, Amir Hirsch, my friend Ted Blackman from MIT, and two ex PrimeSense engineers, Shlomo Zippel and Roy Schenberg. They were the user experience team at PrimeSense that actually was responsible for selling Connect to Microsoft. Uh, we've been developing this since May, uh, and we're excited because Connect was the fastest selling product ever. It sold 10 million copies in two months, and we think that this is going to be as disruptive to the TV as the remote control or even color. Uh, it presents a whole new range of applications, and it's a much better mechanism for control than uh, the current ecosystem who provides and remotes. So we think this will define smart TV space in much the same way that the smartphone is defined by touch. So motion is the next big UI paradigm there. So what do we do? We help developers. We have an ecosystem of a few thousand developers doing Connect applications right now, and 200 of which are using our specific tools. Uh, we can support all of them in our loader, uh, all of the 2,000 developers currently using the, the uh, Connect frameworks that are available to developers to use. And I'm going to use an escape gesture that we've created that allows me to return back to my portal app screen. Now, uh, you know, in the Connect, you have this gesture. This won't work when you're sitting on a couch. Um, we considered alt control delete might be getting up from your couch and doing a burpee. Uh, before the end of this, I'll actually do one for you, maybe. So let me show you an example application. This is what we showed at Demo Day as well. Uh, we've done a little bit of polishing on it since then. This game is called Sushi Warrior. It's a, a pescatarian interpretation of Fruit Ninja. You basically get fish flying over your screen, and you're going to get to cut them with these swords. So what you're seeing here is skeleton retargeting, actually, where we, we map my skeleton to the avatar on screen. The avatar on screen is actually a ragdoll model. So as I spin around, his whole body reacts, which means I can't put my hand inside my body or inside my head. His head actually gets punched by it. Uh, so that's, that's a type of retargeting we've been working on. Let me exit this. You can hear the piano notes going A and F. That's just an auditory cue that we've provided for that. So let me run through some of the technical hurdles we've been addressing with Connect. The, the Connect has a, a new user interface possibility, but it's not really realized yet. Right now, we only have hand points and skeletons. And where ZigFu comes in is we take skeletons and hand points and provide you with things like menus and lists and buttons and navigation control to get around various applications. So right now, there are two skeleton tracking algorithms that are widely available, one of which is the Connect SDK provided in a beta version uh, for non-commercial use, and the other is called Knight from PrimeSense. There are several other skeletons available from other companies as well. The differences between these algorithms are that the Connect SDK requires no calibration pose in order to start tracking. The Knight algorithm, currently, you have to stand in a pose in order to be tracked. Uh, we understand that PrimeSense will be updating that to provide a calibration-free skeleton. The Connect SDK skeleton also provides you with the fingertip and toe data, so you can actually get your wrist and ankle data as well. And we've actually been working with both skeletons. We can switch back and forth between them uh, using a higher level abstraction. One of the complicated parts in developing an application with skeleton tracking is actually determining who's the user. So if you have no calibration required and there's a gathering of people, you don't know who is player one. So you might actually have a visual cue on screen which says stand here. Or you might say raise your hand to be player one. Or you might have them actually do the calibration pose, which is how we've actually been working with all of these things since everybody supports calibration pose. The issue with using a skeleton is that you get 30 frames per second from the camera, but your game engine renders at 60 frames per second. So you do an algorithm which has the coolest name we could possibly imagine, dead reckoning. Uh, 
you take the velocity and acceleration data and you can interpolate where you are and you can actually eliminate latency like we do in that game. We eliminate some of the latency that the camera has uh, at 30 frames per second, so you have a worst case 60 milliseconds. We can get ahead of time predictions so we can actually detect where the user is exactly at that moment. Uh, the inverse kinematic stuff I showed in that game, I was able to hit my head and my arms wouldn't go through my head. If you don't actually have a physicalized ragdoll character, you'll have all sorts of awkward things that can happen where your arms will go inside of the body of a fat character or something like that. And then if you want to map to non-humanoid characters, you need to do intelligent character mapping. So you look at the animation you're performing and you can map that to say a dinosaur which doesn't match your, your physiology. Alternatively, you can imagine a character on jumping bars where you pull up and then the feet would be dangling so you wouldn't want to have the animation control the feet. In hand tracking, there's a bunch of technical issues that we've been addressing. The first thing you notice is that I'm doing this focus gesture where I push in and out. In the Kinect, they actually have a wave gesture to gain focus and we've found that you know, both work pretty well but the push gesture has the lowest rate of false positives. Uh, people can be caught waving by accident and it would cause an uh, unwanted effect. Uh, once you start a focus gesture, you get what's known as a session, and that means you have control over the computer using gestures. Now, I have the thing ending the session when I put my hand down. It doesn't come back. It's still tracking my hand, of course, but I need to address it again in order to get a session. The session ends as soon as I go to the next slide. In another version of the slide viewer, you might keep the thing up so that you can continuously navigate through the slides. A lot of the issues with hand position are that you might think that you would design things for up, down, and left, right, but actually if I'm over here, my left and right axis is relative to the screen. We've oriented it differently. So we've done a lot of work to make sure that the left and right still work in this axis, even though you've adjusted. Another issue is that up and down is actually according to your elbow. It's not like this. This requires much more muscle movement, and the, uh, the goal is to prevent what's called gorilla arm, namely the effect of having to move too many muscles and hold your arm out in order to select things. So if, to fix those kind of things, you know, you, you have to have differentiation between what, what, what the user's intent is. So up and down is actually along this plane and not along this plane. In most UI components, you're going to have a subset of things that you want to have on the screen to select. So the Xbox right now provides snapping. You know, you can put your hand on something, it'll snap to it, move to the next thing, you can snap to it. And you need to filter the hand point basically to clean up the noise. This thing right here provides one-to-one -one feedback, and that's extremely critical to making this usable. So let me go back and demonstrate some of the stuff we've done with uh, hand tracking. We've built an application uh, that will show Facebook. This will be my live feed, actually, so we are on the net. Uh, I made my friends uh, not post things today, so we won't see anything dirty here. <laughs> okay, so here's my actual Facebook feed. And uh, as soon as it loads up, we'll see uh, that I can, I can navigate it using uh, down, I can go back up, and I have created this fast, rapid uh, gesture for detecting uh, uh, flick, basically. Now we're going to pull new data from our feed. Okay, so there's more data being pulled. And we're differentiating there between what is a, a flick and a push, so you'll see that I can expand comments with a push. I can go up with the same kind of flick gesture. And so the real use case for this would be one where you, you have your friends sharing videos and you know, every time you see it, you can filter the feed for videos and then we'd be able to launch them. Uh, here I have navigation to go back to log in as one of my co-founders. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, so we'll exit. I can't actually hear any audio of the thing reacting. There we go. Okay, so now we'll go back and I'll show you the YouTube player that we've created. Now this YouTube player demonstrates a cool use case uh, for the Kinect. If we, if we were able to incorporate voice recognition right now like the Xbox TV would, we would say, well, I want to find that Kinect video I saw uh, from Will It Blend. Will it where Blend? That is the question. It blends a Kinect. So here we have volume controls on the right side, and I can turn up the volume. We created a seek control up on the top here. Uh, let me do it again. I will seek to the middle, hopefully find some real Kinect violence. Oh, not quite. He's playing the Kinect here. Where is he blending? Here, he's going to blend it for us. So these kind of controls, you'll notice actually the seek bar doesn't have a filter on it, so it's very noisy and hard to control. And we've created navigation controls to be able to uh, go back to that home screen. Selecting video. Um, 
So my friends actually made the OK Go video here, and I, I can play that, for example. And actually, I'll just go back and wrap up my presentation with uh, It's a great video. I suggest you watch the OK Go Rube Goldberg version. Video. <laughs> so here's what we've learned about user experience testing with Connect. We, we've discovered a number of different sort of insights into how to make a good UI with Connect. The most important thing we've discovered is that testing is critical, absolutely critical. Users get better uh, with time and start to need fewer and fewer visual cues to actually be able to use the UI. So it's important to have settings that allow them to adjust that. Uh, the miss rate over time goes down dramatically if you uh, have strong visual cues that provide a one-to-one -one feedback with uh, what the action is. That's where this hand gesture and I have the bar. It's, it's not a two-dimensional cursor, but I do have a one-to-one -one feedback between the control and, and my hand. The considerations are, are, are very clear here. You want to avoid missing targets. If you have a set of n elements, you want to make sure that you can go to the nth element. So we have tests where we have a list of 100 elements, and we say go to number 30, go to number 52. We run the tests, and we see how well a user is doing. Another thing we have to design for is fighting for control. So if there are two people both here doing this, I don't know which hand's actually in control. It's my left hand. Um, so you want to have some visual cues that actually give you the depth image. So the Connect provides that on the bottom right-hand corner. This way you know who's actually in control of the television at the time when they're changing the channels. And of course, you have false positives. So you want to make your gestures something where they won't accidentally exit. And we talked about gorilla arm. So the most important thing that we've actually discovered in making full body games is obstruction awareness. Um, I, I was being filmed by Japanese media showing off a soccer game we created where you kick a ball into a goal. And of course, my dog walks in front of me. And uh, the Japanese guy suggests that if I kick the dog, the video would go viral. Uh, <laughs> I, I happen to like my dog, and I believe that if we, if we were in the age of visual media reasoning, the Kinect ought to be able to say, well, there is, in fact, a child or a dog or a light on the ceiling that you might not want to hit. So a lot of those kind of considerations have to be integrated into the user experience right now. So I'm going to wrap up by just saying that we are Zigfu. You can contact me at amir at zigfu.com. Oh, we're developing an app ecosystem, and I'm going to show you right before I finish up, I'll show you the store and all the stuff in it. We think that what we're creating is kind of like the motion first UI. It's Coco for motion, essentially, where you have on touch all the menus and lists. We're going to provide those kind of things to developers to create apps on a motion TV. Uh, we're seeing the same pattern with touch. Everything comes out in touch, it was cursor based. Same thing with motion, because we're adopting paradigm from the previous generation of tech. Now everything is going to go native in motion, and we're really excited to provide that to developers. So, I guess a, a really killer demo would be to say, go back and actually download an app from our store and run it. So let's, let's pretend like uh, you, you went to our website and downloaded something. And wow, the Wi-Fi is really fast here. So it'll come up in our app list in a second. And here's that cover flow menu. And it actually did download this from zigfu.com. And now I have the ability to go through and navigate this. So this is one of those test things. Without a visual cue on the bottom to indicate left or right, without the visual cue, we have no idea where we are. And it's hard to actually accurately select things. And once you add sort of the left and right arrows and a middle thing with the one-dimensional feedback, you know where you are. And it looks awful. OK, so I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you.